Welcome to the Maverick Files. Trauma Core. Libraries of this mysterious content have been stumbled upon all across the internet. Found on Instagram, Reddit, and Tumblr. When coming across said imagery, you find that Trauma Core represents itself as liminality, as nostalgia, as the window itself between distant memories and the eternal now. Controversially described as an aesthetic, these liminal spaces are revised to present hints of innocence using bright yet dull colors. While there are many videos that describe liminal spaces, even an earlier video of mine which fleetingly mentions liminality, Trauma Core is much different. Trauma Core images do provide and accessorize liminality, but the atmosphere, the atmosphere changes everything. Liminal spaces remind you of a time once forgotten, but Trauma Core, it's made for times that cannot be forgotten. Trauma Core is made up of memoirs that do not want to be forgotten, memoirs that crave to be resolved. The innocence is solely on a surface level plane, as it is then brutally disrupted with sporadic messages of uncontrollable thoughts and urges. Trauma Core isn't always vibrant, but it isn't always calm. It displays the complex dichotomy of chaos, direct and impetuous, or muted and underlying. It is chaos nonetheless. Before the blow up of Instagram, Tumblr would favor this harsh art style, often tagging it under the name Marut. When an image or blog was identified as Marut, it was because it represented a contradiction of visuals. Soft, lighthearted, and cute, paired along with a gothic and brash extremism. Marut imagery radiated a longing feeling of a once bittersweet tragedy. Although paired with youth-based trauma, adult trauma can often be affiliated as well. And while the internet subculture didn't really take off until the 2010s, the Trauma Core aesthetic can be compared to the 20th century avant-garde style of art. Rather strange and unnatural, it releases the potential of the subconscious mind. Or, in other words, this is an act of surrealism. When you take the conscious reality and assert over top of it the creativity of the subconscious. Surreal artists such as Pablo Picasso, Claude Cahun, and Louis Bourgeois, often created beauty from within uncanny, abnormal concepts. So, in other words, you are going to look at art and go, well, that's fucking weird. And that's exactly the point. It unsettles you from your standardized view of comfort. Trauma Core isn't exactly a new concept, more an alternative approach to surreal art. Not that it's unoriginal, just that it shouldn't feel so unsettling. And yet, it does. The reasoning behind creating the artworks, along with the questionable validity, is much harder to breach than other topics. These images exist as a one-sided discussion point, coming from those who have experienced horrendous and immoral actions. Trauma Core is a reactionary theme towards abuse. Therefore, the aspect of morality feels out of the question. However, that does not leave it to be free from criticism. This is a raw form of expressive art, created to express triggering thoughts and opinions. But in doing so, these thoughts and opinions need to be immediately identified. This is where trigger warnings come into action. The premise behind a warning is to highlight 
and prevent either broad or specific topics from being seen from viewers. Unfortunately, some members within the community seem to take no mind to the subjects that they're breaching. You can be scrolling through social media, and the next image you see is a harsh, vile image with graphic descriptive text, and all it has in the description is hashtag art. As if you are being punished by the algorithm for following hashtag art, or just for simply enjoying art. Unfortunately, I had also discovered that a very select few were doing this on purpose, attacking the internet, harassing the subconscious, antagonizing you with deeply unsettling thoughts and imagery, all because they just can. When a situation occurs in one's life, the brain's wiring system can become completely rerouted and altered, causing the person to act and react differently compared to an unaffected individual. If a person is conditioned to loud and chaotic environments, then they may be rewired to find peace within that environment. Therefore, trauma core has to be unsettling. Trauma itself is disturbing. It's raw, it is powerful, and it is repulsive. When Tumblr pioneered the genre of trauma core, the purpose behind creating it was to reflect the artist's rawest and most authentic feelings and thoughts. But the purpose behind sharing it could fall into multiple reasons. And as I researched this, and as I researched trauma and behavioral development, I felt that if I spoke on the reasons behind doing so, it wouldn't feel right. Me reading a dozen headlines and articles does not give me the right to speak on whether or not trauma core is beneficial. I am also not an active member, nor ever was a member of any trauma core communities. So, I won't act like I have leverage on behalf of why this art could be created. However, I also didn't want to just paint this as a freak show, or to shun victims and artists. So, wanting to get a deeper, more educated perspective on the matter, I decided to go the extra mile in an attempt to breach the legitimacy behind trauma core, and if it brings harm or peace to the internet. I was able to reach out and sit down with a mental health specialist, a professional with a master's degree in social work who specializes in working with youth and has been working with kids for over a decade now. She wished to remain anonymous for job security reasons, so for her safety, I will be referring to her simply as Leah. How long would you say you've been in the, can I call it mental health department? Yeah, I would say mental health. I've been directly in the mental health field since about 2017. I started from the groundwork doing case management, very mobile stuff, being in families homes. And I've been around kids for even longer, probably over 10 years now. And that's kind of drove me going into the mental health field in the first place. Okay, okay. What's your greatest career strength that you would be able to spin off the top of your mind? I think being able to look at the whole picture of someone, and someone lives in a lot of systems, and some are strengths, and some are not. You have to look at all of them. So looking at everything happening and being able to identify where barriers are, but also where their strengths are. So, you know, I've contacted you to uh, interview about this internet trend called Trauma Core. Uh, we, we spoke about it over email for a little bit. Have you heard of something like Trauma Core before? I have. I am with youth and young adults all the time. It's come up. And actually, looking through, uh, it's come up on social media a bunch of times. I don't think I knew that was what the word was for it before I started working with the kids. I am now. <laughs> you said that you've never come across the term before, but, uh, is there a professional term in your field that best blankets, you know, trauma core, or is that at least in the ballpark of what trauma core could be? Mm, yes and no. I think it's entering into the territory of 
visual journaling, art therapy, their creative expression is used across different therapy techniques because research shows it helps. It's very evidence-based, which is something that's important in my field. And art and creative expression helps with trauma processing. However, I don't think it quite fits specifically into a form of therapy. Like, there's not one word that covers it. Okay, okay. So, would you or would you not consider the act of trauma core specifically as a uh, legitimate therapy? In my professional opinion, I think it walks a very fine line. I would say it falls more into self-help, which can be very valid. Uh, but I worry that people aren't actually processing trauma or healing by doing this. There's a cycle of dealing with trauma. You learn to bring it up, you process it, you move on. Very simplified way of saying that. Um, and I feel like trauma core is very much like bringing it up and starting to process it. But there's not like that therapist or professional to give extra skills or coping skills to learn to process it and move on. Uh, it could make people more vulnerable, it could trigger them. So I think um, it's a very gray area. Okay, okay. I don't know if you've actually seen Trauma Core images before. I believe you said you have. It is very vivid. Uh, very, very brash, while also being subtle with the messages. Um, it doesn't often tell you exactly what happened or what the artist is thinking or happening or what happened to the artist, but you get kind of a rather bold clue. Do you believe an altered version of that vivid expression style would benefit more or like a look i'm sharing similar taboo thoughts so you don't have to shun yourself perspective mm -hmm. i think before finding strengths of trauma core it's that it breaks stigma it builds community people that otherwise would feel alone specifically with horrible memories and feelings now have a place to go to express those and share those thoughts and find others in similar circumstances often in a non-judgmental atmosphere. We know that not feeling alone and having community is a strong protective factor when processing trauma or even just no mental health issues in general. On the other hand, my clinical side worries that creating these environments can also be very triggering cause re traumatization of each other and sometimes people when they're in environments where they're working up trauma can tend to like feed into each other so as they're processing and progressing it's kind of creating like a vicious loop of not actually processing trauma now when it comes to the internet of course there is a very opinionated side and um it seems there be that outside of the trauma core community, there is a lot of disgust and disdain towards trauma core artists due to, well, like you said, that similar thought, the uh, fear of re-traumatizing others. Do you feel that the reaction that the internet holds is validated or should there be like a layer of leniency towards these, I guess, attempts of self-healing and the journey of self-discovering? So I think in diving deeper, I think a lot of people, in general, feel what trauma core romanticizes abuse, and then you can't see past the triggering content. You know, online algorithms now tend to show people very aesthetic, pretty, beautiful things, things they're interested in, and we don't want to see or hear about traumatic events. So, when it's told in like an I overcame tone or this positive sign, people like it. And Tom McCore goes against all of that. It's not pretty, it's not aesthetic, it's not nice, they're not sugarcoating anything. They're exploring some of the most heinous things that are happening in societies and within households. And that goes against the grain. So I think that's where a lot of the disdain comes from. I think there should be some leniency given, but I don't want to say all this to, like, 
say everything's okay, because I think there is a high likelihood that people could be triggered, especially if you weren't expecting to be in that space. So, with the discussion and everything, uh, I know you touched on this pretty heavily earlier on, but can you see Trauma Core or a version of Trauma Core? Can you see that actually ever becoming an act of therapy? I think from a purely clinical approach, Trauma Core is going to remain in that self help category. I, of course, am going to recommend that people see a professional do trauma therapy. Art therapy, they have a trained professional with them while trying to process serious traumatic events. But I also understand that often professional treatment is inaccessible for people. So there's already a huge self help area, you know. Art therapy books. Art therapy requires a lot of training, everything's evidence based. The activities they're using, the methods they're using have all been studied to show improvements and are done in specific ways. This is not so much following that, but I think this could be used for people that are interested in it as, you know, a tool in a toolbox when working with a professional instead of doing journaling or doodling or art therapy to be added in. I, that's my opinion, of course. I think the difference between self-help and professional help in general is that in professional treatment there is a practitioner there that has very specific training, takes a lot of training to become a practitioner, and they're using modalities and methods that are evidence-based, which means they're studied. There is a correlation for positive outcomes. They are working on building skills, building interventions, building tolerance to traumatic events. They're trying to deal with feelings and intrusive thoughts that happen when bringing up trauma. The trauma core is usually a single person doing these art pieces. So they're not necessarily building skills and continuing to process trauma. So I think that it's not going to fall into like a clinical approach, but I think it could be a tool in the toolbox. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, I just gotta know for the sake of knowing uh, before I head out. What is your personal opinion and feelings on Trauma Core? Mm, I would say that personally it is not a space for me. I don't want to be in those spaces. I see that a lot of people might benefit from them. Um, but it can be very triggering, especially for someone that sits in a room all day and listens to people's trauma. I tend to leave work and not put myself in places to have more trauma. So it's kind of like a mental health self-care thing for me that I don't usually go into those spaces. So you would personally avoid Trauma Core? I think so, yeah. I mean, it comes up, so I've seen it, I've come across it, it's just not something that, like, I find beneficial for myself. So I tend to stay away, and I think knowing those boundaries is something that's really important if we're going to run to spaces like this. Trauma Core is a thin line. For some, Creating and even browsing these images holds the potential to identify purpose or touch base with who they once were, to not feel alone, to finally have the opportunity to be maybe understood, to attempt to highlight oneself and find validation within the reactions. However, some viewers do just enjoy the grim gritty aesthetic, which can be harmful as it's debated as romanticizing trauma versus simply enjoying surreal art. These ideas all carry validity in their reasons, but it should be to an extent. Please be careful and be self-aware when approaching this genre. To this day, Trauma Core remains prominent, but artists do seem to be cleaning up the community and providing a much safer space for everyone, 
whether you're involved or not. <laughs> 